apparently she has this role that if she's like out amongst us peasants, we're not allowed to look her in the eye. One thing you can always trust in, oh God, family. We do our best. You don't need to worry about Ben. Let me just tell you. get a moniker of being like a diva, which I never felt I deserved, which I don't deserve. The A-list everything in her mind celebrity was shopping in NYC and told a salesperson to stop looking at her and to turn the other way. Following months of rumors surrounding the split pair, Jennifer Lopez, 55, filed for divorce from Ben Affleck, 52, on August 20, 2024 the anniversary of their traditional wedding ceremony. This officially ended their two-year marriage. The couple first got married in a small Las Vegas ceremony on July 16, 2022, but it was on August 20, 2022 that Lopez filed in Los Angeles County Superior Court and listed April 26, 2024 as the official date of their separation. Remarkably, the Selena actress reportedly filed without the help of a lawyer, opting to represent herself. Tim's was the first to report the news. Celebrity couple Jennifer and Ben Franklin, who were well known in the early 2000s, rekindled their romance in 2021 after more than 17 years apart. Their initial engagement in 2002 had caught the public's attention but they postponed their wedding in September 2003 and eventually broke up in January 2004. Despite their breakup, they remained friends, with both going on to marry other people. They celebrated their second, more formal wedding at Affleck's 87-acre estate in Georgia. Lopez to salsa singer Mark, Affleck to Jennifer Garner, and Anthony Lopez and Anthony were wed from 2004 to 2014. During that time, they produced twins, Max and Emmy, who are now 16 years old. The pair first filed for divorce in 2011, after which they separated in 2011. After discussing her union with Anthony in a 2016 interview with Yahoo magazine before her marriage to Anthony Lopez, Loelze acknowledged that she had already been married twice and had been divorced twice before. Her first marriage to Ojani Noah in 1997 lasted only 11 months after their breakup. She also famously dated hip-hop mogul Show Diddy Combs for two years before they broke up in 2001. In that same year, Lopes married Chris Judd, a dancer she met on the set of her love, Don't Cost a Thing music video. But their marriage was short-lived, ending in June 2002, with the divorce finalized in 2003. Her and Affleck's reunion after her breakup with Anthony, Lopez was involved in a number of high-profile relationships. She went on to date backup dancer Casper Smart for a year, but that relationship ended permanently in 2016. In February 2017, Lopez moved on and started dating Alex Rodriguez, a former baseball player for the New York Yankees. The couple got engaged after two years of dating, but their wedding was repeatedly postponed because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and they eventually called off their engagement in 2021. Lopez and Affleck reunited in May 2021 making headlines with their rekindled romance as they went on trips to Montana and Miami. By April 2022, they had announced their engagement, and July of that year, they were married. Their divorce signals the end of yet another chapter in their long and storied relationship, leaving fans and the public to reflect on the many ups and downs of their romance. It appears that Lopez and Affleck's top priority right now is their kids. They have both been spotted attempting to keep things normal for their families during this trying time. Whether this is the end of Jennifer's story or just a break in it, only time will tell. But for the time being, both of them seem ready to move on. Mark is the father of Lopez's children. She previously married and divorced twice the first time lasting just 11 months from 1997 to 1998.
Lumpus and Anthony were wed from 2004 to 2014 and had twins, Max and Emmy, who are 16 years old. They first announced their split in 2011 and finalized their divorce three years later. Looking back on her marriage to Anthony, Lopez acknowledged in a 2016 interview that she knew early on that the relationship wasn't right for her. She added that although it wasn't the dream she had hoped for, she had to work hard to make things right. The two met on the shooting of a 1999 music video and went on to date for two years until splitting up in 2001. In that same year, Lopez married dancer Chris Judd who she had met while filming her popular movie, Homs. Love Don't Cost a Thing music video, but their marriage ended in 2002 and was finally finalized in 2003. Following her breakup with Anthony Lopez, she had an intermittent affair with her backup dancer, Casper Smart, which ended in 2016. She then dated Drake for a short while before moving on to former baseball player, Alex Rodriguez. The couple became engaged after two years of dating, but they repeatedly postponed their wedding due to the COVID-19 pandemic, finally calling it quits in 2010. Notwithstanding the public's enthusiasm for Jennifer 2.0, the couple's marriage finally collapsed under the strains and difficulties, resulting in their recent divorce. From 1999 to 2001, Jennifer Lopez and Sean Diddy Combs enjoyed a high-profile relationship filled with spotlights and celebrity power. However, Lopez later revealed that she went through a very difficult time during their time together, describing it as throwing her life into a tailspin of emotional distress. She also hinted at Diddy's possible infidelity, saying that although she never caught him eating, she often suspected it when he would disappear for hours, supposedly going to clubs, and not returning until the following day. Their relationship ended in 2001 after a string of public incidents, including the infamous nightclub shooting in New York City, which resulted in both of their arrests, although Lopez was found not guilty. Diddy has discussed Lopez in interviews years later, insisting that he still has respect for her. But despite the turmoil surrounding their relationship, neither of them is interested in talking about their past or her present connections. Since their breakup, they have both gone on to other important relationships. This background gives Lopez's past relationships more meaning, especially in light of how her time with Diddy influenced some of her later choices in life and love. Jennifer Lopez's romantic history is characterized by a string of high-profile partnerships, all of which had a profound effect on her life. Her relationship with Sean Diddy Combs in the late 1990s was emotionally taxing, and Lopez later opened up about the difficulties she encountered. This relationship, which ended in the midst of public scandals, greatly influenced the way she approached other relationships Despite their past, 54-year-old Sean Diddy Combs and Jennifer Loves had a short but well-publicized romance from 1999 to 2001. According to sources, Jennifer has refrained from commenting on the recent scandals involving Diddy. It is evident that she disapproves of his purported actions and is instead preoccupied with her marriage to Ben Affleck. Recently, Jennifer even rebuffed a reporter's attempt to inquire about rumors pertaining to their relationship, highlighting her resolve to keep her personal life out of the public eye. Following the CNN publication of a horrific video depicting Diddy abusing his Diddy, is currently embroiled in four more lawsuits accusing him of serious crimes, including drugging and assault, but no formal charges have been filed against him as of yet. The situation has only gotten more complicated. Reports indicate that the case is being reinvestigated, with federal authorities allegedly closing in on more details. Cassie, Diddy's girlfriend, was photographed in a hotel back in 2016. Cassie has since spoken out, thanking supporters and making it clear she's standing strong. 
Natalia Rubin, who was characterized as a mentor and heavily engaged throughout that turbulent period, is a pivotal element in this story. The connection between Natalia and those involved terminated abruptly, adding even more complexity to the unfolding story. A mentor to me at the time, and we had this wild, turbulent relationship that ended abruptly. Let's imagine that to heighten the tension, there are reports that Ben Affleck is set to divulge information regarding Gilo's former relationship with Diddy, perhaps linking her to some of Diddy's acts against Cassie. These rumors have only been stoked by the reopening of the 1999 club shooting case, which featured Diddy and Jennifer. Sources close to the couple have shared that the tension surrounding Diddy's legal troubles has added significant strain to their already fragile relationship, even though Jennifer is reportedly trying to patch things up with Ben. Insiders claim that Ben has moved out and consulted with lawyers. Reports suggest that Invest investigators are uncovering more information about Jennifer's involvement with Diddy during their time together. This turmoil seems to be taking a toll on Jennifer and Ben's marriage. There are rumors that Ben would inform the authorities of what he knows about Jennifer's previous relationship with Diddy if their divorce is finalized. It doesn't get much uglier in the entertainment industry than now, with so many bombshell admissions and unresolved legal disputes. It's an environment that will undoubtedly everyone on the edge of their seats. In a 2003 interview with Vibe magazine, Jennifer Lopez discussed how devastating it was when Diddy cheated on her, describing it as the first time she had experienced infidelity. However, some people believe that Jennifer Lopes may have actually assisted Diddy in committing and covering up some of his crimes. One such instance is the 1999 New York City shooting, which is being reopened by the federal authorities due to new evidence that suggests J. Lo may have assisted in smuggling the weapon used during the incident. In fact, J. Lo was brought up in a lawsuit filed by Lil Rod against Diddy, where Lil Rod claimed that Diddy admitted to being responsible for the nightclub shooting in NYC alongside rapper Shine. Litigation for perspective, this event happened on December 28, 1999, at a club in Times Square, Manhattan, New York. Jennifer Lopez, Diddy's ex-girlfriend, reportedly brought the firearm into the club and gave it to Diddy after an argument broke out. As they were leaving the club, Diddy J. Lo and a few other members of Diddy's Bad Boy Records team were there to celebrate the impending release of Shine's album, who had just signed with the label. According to reports, Diddy bumped into Matthew Allen, Aka, Scar, this encounter quickly became heated and shots were fired. Diddy and Jello then tried to drive away from the scene, but in their haste, they made the fatal mistake of leaving the weapon in the car's trunk. Their night worsened when they ran a red light, which resulted in them being stopped by the police. When the police found the weapon in the trunk, they arrested both of them. Diddy tried to use his influence to get out of the situation by trying to bribe his driver into claiming ownership of the weapon. But when that plan failed, he resorted to getting his lawyers to shift the blame onto Shine, even allegedly going so far as to hire false witnesses to testify against him. Diddy and JLo were photographed together, and it was reported that JLo was in tears at the station. Her mother reportedly even came to the station and started berating her in Spanish, warning her not to get involved with Diddy. Despite the fact that Diddy's case was ultimately abandoned in Shine, was found guilty and given a 10-year jail term, there has long been conjecture that J-Lo may have served as Diddy's weapon. Smuggler, one of Diddy's attorneys, attempted to refute the report in court that night during the trial by telling the judge this argument seemed to help Diddy and Jillo avoid further legal trouble. But recent developments suggest that the feds believe they now have more information that could prove Jillo was indeed involved in smuggling the weapon that night. There are also rumors that Jillo might have had a more active role in Diddy's organization, 
even after their breakup, though these claims remain speculative. I don't know if you know this judge, but Jennifer Lopez is a very famous actress. To think Mr. Combs is walking around with her with a loaded weapon is so ridiculous that it stretches the imagination. Rumors have been circulating at this point, suggesting that Diddy may have had assistance from Jennifer Lopez with some of the horrific things he is accused of doing to Cassie. The alleged victims of Diddy's actions have frequently mentioned in the lawsuits we have seen so far how he had a network of enablers who allowed him to continue his harmful actions without facing any consequences. For instance, Cassie in her lawsuit described how, after Diddy would physically harm her, she would sometimes run and hide in her apartment only to realize that, because of Diddy's power, there was no one she could report Diddy to. Cassie also said that each time she attempted to go Diddy and his formidable network would compel her to return. Cassie did not name the members of Diddy's inner circle in her lawsuit, but Lil Rod's lawsuit has revealed that this group consists of powerful music industry executives, Diddy's personal help, and other individuals who assisted him in carrying out his actions. Rumor has it that Jennifer Lopez was a member of this inner circle, which permitted Diddy's behavior, and that Ben Affleck reportedly believes GLO played an active role in Diddy's organization. This suspicion is said to have been the final straw in Ben and JLo's already precarious marriage. For a time now, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez have been in the spotlight, particularly after JLo's latest films received negative reviews. JLo recently unveiled a three part body of work that includes the This Is Me album, a musical video of the same name and a documentary titled The Greatest Love Story that examines her relationship with Ben Affleck. Never informed that they failed miserably despite being meant to showcase J. Lo's evolution and her bond with Ben. The album, which was intended to commemorate the release of her 2002 album, This Is Me, only managed to sell 14,000 copies in its first week and had no effect on the Billboard 200 chart. The documentary, on the other hand, 